Based on the trends we can see after the start of the year, we're projecting 2024 we'll see probably 15% home sales growth over 2023. Home prices will be up this year by a few percent also. Uh, these trends are very clear as we start the new year. The market can change, of course. 2022 started insanely strong and weakened rapidly in the second quarter. Uh, 2023 started with recovery, but slowed down again in the third quarter as mortgage rates hit 8%. The signals right now tell us that 2024 is starting stronger than last year, and home purchase demand is increasing each week. So could the ho housing market uh, slow, change and slow again in 2024? That's certainly possible. But as of right now, uh, each week is showing increasing activity. The data does not show any signs of, of slowing on any of the active market uh, metrics currently. Home, home sales are increasing each week. Inventory is inching up. And home price signals are increasing too. At Altos Research, we track every home for sale in the country every week. We track all the pricing, all the supply and demand, all the changes in that data so that you can understand it before you see it in the traditional headlines. Uh, I'm Mike Simonson. I'm the founder of Altos. And let's look at what the data is telling us about, about the real estate market for 2024 already. There are 449,000 single family homes unsold on the market now. That's 2.75%, per percent, two and three quarters percent fewer than last week, uh, but it's 6% more than last year at this time. Each week, inventory is increasing just a bit relative to last year. There are slightly more sellers each week now. Uh, last year was marked by how few sellers there were. And so it sure feels to me like that crazy restriction from last year is easing. A bit so we can expect to have more sellers all year uh, unless rates dip into the fives then i expect demand will pick up so quickly that inventory will drop again uh, I've, I've pointed out that consumers are more sensitive to changes in mortgage rates than to the absolute levels so over the last 24 months we've had incredibly volatile lots of changes in mortgage rates so now if rates stabilize in the sixes or sevens this year that will allow these trends we now see to continue. This chart has uh, the last decade of inventory cycles. I've highlighted uh, with vertical lines last year and 2019. At the far right end of the chart, you can see that inventory is declining as normal for the season. Uh, just a tad more homes on the market now than last year. But of course, there's no signal for inventory to get back to normal, the old 2019 levels anytime soon, at least not this year, uh, just slightly more, which is a good thing. So slightly more inventory is a good thing. More supply means more sales can happen. Inventory growth is not spread evenly across the country. Inventory is climbing in the South and Central US. Texas, Florida, Arkansas, Louisiana, up through Nebraska and Wisconsin have more homes on the market now than uh, last year at this time. Unfortunately, the Western and Northeast states have less available inventory than last year. Nevada, California, Arizona, New York, New Jersey. So it's going to be fascinating to see how this di inventory dynamic, this, this regional disparity plays out for the rest of the year. Next week, Thursday, January 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific, we'll have our January webinar, hour-long webinar. I'll spend more time on the local variations in the inventory as well as, as the details for all the, the details for the coming year. Uh, if you need to communicate about the market with your buyers and sellers, I recommend you join us. Uh, there's a link in the description below to register for that webinar. Click that and join us. That's next Thursday, January 18th. So on average, inventory is building relative to last year. In fact, each week now, the new listings data is coming in slightly ahead of last year. Uh, in the fall, inventory ri was rising because demand slowed when, when rates jumped over 8%. Now, buyers are there. We just have a few more new, new sellers each week. So uh, 2023 had very few sellers, and it looks like that, that crazy restriction is loosening up a bit, finally.
In this chart, each line is a year. The light red line was the curve for 2023, and you can see how dramatically fewer sellers were than normal. The gray lines are our previous years, and the dark red line just starting at the uh, at the left end of the chart, and it's 9% more new listings, new sellers this week than la the same week last year. So that's encouraging to me. There are some folks who have a hypothesis that we might see a flood of sellers this year. For example, if rates uh, crash down, fall down a lot. Uh, these are folks that are hypothesized to have held off selling last year and now are going to rush to the markets, which, okay, this could happen. If it happens, you'll see the dark red line here. Uh, which is at the at the left, starting at the left side of the chart here, you'll see the dark red lines start to climb above the gray lines. The gray lines are the previous years, and so you'll see this year start to climb uh, uh, over those. Right now, we still have fewer sellers than normal. Uh, we have a few more than last year, but not a lot. So keep your eyes here on this new listings volume to see if that flood of sellers is materializing. As of right now, it's starting to ease off, but I don't see any signs of a dramatic increase in new listings. And I think it's important to keep in mind that as inventory grows, uh, inventory of homes that you can buy grows, so does the pace of sales. So this really in illustrates how we had a supply constrained uh, market last year. The sales were held back by lack of sellers. So there are now 247,000 single family homes in contract, in the contract pending stage. That's four and a quarter percent more homes now in the sales process than last year at this time. So the sales that are going to close in the next month or so are already in the pipeline. And so that sales rate is already increasing for 2024. In this chart, each bar is the total number of homes in contract. The taller a bar, the more sales in process. The light portion of the bar is the new sales that week, the new pendings each week. Uh, I've drawn a horizontal line so you can see how uh, where we are compared to, for example, last year at this time, the first two weeks of January, the fewest sales of the year, of course. Um, but you can see how each week now we are above, we have more sales than last week. And in fact, the new contracts this week are 13% more than last year during that first week of January. So this sales rate has been trending up very obviously. And I'm pretty confident that now that we will see 15% more home sales in 2024 than we did the year prior. That's a pretty healthy growth. Uh, it is off very low level, so it's it, it's but it's growth. Um, and the total sales pending right now, that 247,000, is four and a quarter percent more than last year at this time. But the new pendings this week are 13 percent more. So you can see the sales momentum is gaining. Meanwhile, the uh, price reductions are dropping rapidly. So each week, fewer home sellers need to drop their prices. Currently, 32.8% of the homes on the market have taken a price cut. That's 200 basis points fewer than last week. Uh, there are fewer price reductions because there is more fresh inventory and more of them are getting offers. In this chart, each line is a year. And each as each year starts, the... Uh, fresh new inventory gets listed and they don't take a price cut till later in the season. So you get this, nat this natural seasonal curve. 2024 is showing us right now rapid improvement in price reductions, dropping faster than normal for this time of year, meaning fewer sellers feel the need to cut their prices. That says to me that sellers are recognizing the home buyer demand is there. Nationally, normally, about a third of homes take a price cut, uh, 30 to 35%. That's the gray band in this chart. Today's market is right in the middle of the normal zone. Obviously, in recent years, the market was way hotter than normal with fewer price cuts. Last year started slow, then recovered, so price reductions didn't get back into the normal range until the middle of February. Uh, price reductions are a leading indicator of future sales prices. A house that's on the market now and has demand doesn't need to cut prices. So these get offers in January or and close in February or March. So you can see the, the dark red line on the, on the left side of the chart here 
this is uh, showing us that home price signals for 2024 are already starting stronger than last year. Uh, after the first of the year, we always see the price signals uh, with the, the, the cohort of the, the new listings. So the price of the new listings each week, the cohort of properties that got newly listed. Sellers waited over the holidays, and so then they start hitting the market right after New Year's. And if they have buyers, the price of the new listing spikes up quickly. Uh, you can see it most dramatically two years ago, the at the peak of the pandemic buying frenzy, right at the end, the bright red line, the price of the new listings, it spiked quickly after January 1. And this year we can see a little spike in the price of new listings already to $409,000. So I expect that to dip next week before resuming its climb through May. Uh, what we're looking for here is how quickly the price of the new listings, that bright red line, how quickly that rises in the next few weeks. It should tell us if we're looking at like zero to three percent home price increases for the year or maybe three to five percent home price increase for 2024. The median price of all the single family homes in the US now is $418,000. Uh, there is enough strength in the pricing signals that it looks like this spring, in June, we will pass the all-time high from June two years ago. Um, like inventory, the home price appreciation is three to five percent across the country, but it's not the same everywhere. Some markets are still down from the pandemic peaks and haven't found the bottom yet. So I will spend more time in the webinar next Thursday, January 18. Uh, and to look at the different local markets and what to expect for price appreciation in 2024. Make sure you click the, the link for that webinar in the description below. These are limited to 1,000 attendees, and we get way more than that who want to join each month. So you can still reserve your spot. Just click the, the link in the, in the description below to reserve your spot in the webinar. If you need to help buyers and sellers understand the actual data, what's actually happening right now, you should join us at Altos. Uh, people need your help understanding the fast-changing market, and they need to hear it from you. Go to altosresearch.com, book a free consult with our team. We'll, we'll help you know how to talk about the market with your clients and prospects today. There's a link in the description below to join us. Uh, click that, and let's get started. All right, more next week.